Welcome to part four of geometrical optics. In this section of the lecture we're taking on the subject of mirrors. Um, flat mirrors like the one shown here, the one you have in your house, create virtual images. Uh, they also have a focal length that's infinite and negative. And what do I mean by that? Well, if you trace a ray straight into this mirror it bounces straight back out, right? So parallel lines hitting a flat mirror remain parallel, which puts the focal point off at infinity. They have no, essentially, no focal point, uh, and the images are all virtual. Why are the images all virtual? Because the image appears behind the mirror where there is no light. Spherical mirrors are the other type of mirror that you will find around the lab that we pulled out that you use during the lab and spherical mirrors are are um, convergent only if they're they represent a small if the mirror itself is small with respect to radius if the mirror is small with respect to the radius then the focal length f is the radius divided by 2 and it sits out here in front of the mirror in front of the mirror now mirrors are opposite to lenses so this is a concave mirror and it has a positive focal length that is on the same side as the incoming radiation this is different from the lens right the lens had a negative focal length that was on the opposite side of where you could of the lens right well that was here on no it was on this side the same side as the light coming in but you had light going the other way it had a negative focal length right this is a positive focal length for this lens or for this pardon me for this mirror the reason the mirror has to be small with respect to its radius. And by small with respect to the radius means it has just to be a small segment of the mirror, not a big segment of the mirror, is because what we're really talking about is a, a real, a true focusing mirror is a paraboloid. All right, it's a parabola like this one that would then be rotated to give you a mirror. Uh, so a circle, as you can see the pink line here, over a small area approximates the parabola and so a spherical mirror over a small segment approximates a parabolic mirror and it has a focal length of r over 2. For a paraboloid the focal length is given by this right here 4 times the focal length times x right equals y squared times x sorry x is in this direction and this is y I got those different from the convention, but here you go. All right? So y squared gives me x, or x equals y squared over 4f. Right? And the one I drew here, the focal length was 10. Focal length was 10. And what does that mean? That means a parallel ray coming up, ray parallel to the axis coming in here, flex off, goes to the focal point. A ray parallel coming in here reflects off and goes to the focal point. All right? Now you can see one of the potential problems with with um, a mirror like this would be that that focal point, if you wanted to put something in at the focal point to receive all this light, well it would cast a shadow, right? It would cast a shadow on this part of the lens. Well if you look at the dish that you have um, outside your house for receiving satellite, it's actually not made up of this part of the parabola, but it's made up of this part of the parabola. All right. So the parabolic dish is out here. The satellite um, the satellite beam comes in and reflects to the receiver, which is over here because the receiver is over there it's out of the way and doesn't cast a shadow on your dish moving on for the convex spherical mirror convex spherical mirror is divergent right 
a concave spherical mirror, mirror is convergent. So the convex one is divergent. So divergent mirror, divergent lenses have simple similar properties. Converging mirror, converging lenses have simple similar properties. For the divergent lens, the focal length is minus r over 2. All right, just the opposite of the converging lens, uh, converging mirror. The, the divergent mirror focal length is minus r over 2. Because all of this depends up on geometry, the um, equations, the equations for mirrors remain the same as those for lenses. The chief difference being that for a converging mirror, a positive D di is on the same side as the object, right? And it is real. You could reflect this and you would get a real image. Um, now you may or may not have a mirror in your bathroom where you come inside the radius, right? You get in, well, you come inside the focal length, and when you come inside the focal length, you get a large positive magnification. All right, your large positive magnification, and the actual image is behind the mirror. This would be typical for a makeup mirror or mini bathroom mirrors or my shaving mirror. Then for divergent lenses, right, this focal length is negative and the distance to the image is negative. Again, for divergent lenses, you always have a virtual image. For converging lenses, you have a real image. If you're out past, if your object is past the focal point, you have a virtual image. If it's between the focal point and the mirror, and you get a virtual image down back here with magnification greater than one. And for divergent lenses, you get a <clears throat> virtual image behind the mirror and magnification is less than one. And that concludes our section on geometrical optics.